before we, before we usher in the new year, I want to share some thoughts with you. Normally, I, I, I have more of a prophetic message in, in, this, in this particular service. And I, I, I just want to just, I, I just want to allow the Holy Spirit uh, just to lead me. I don't have a lot of time to uh, unpack all that's in my heart, but I'll do that in the, in the coming weeks. But I, I want to give you the highlights of what I believe the Lord wants to say to the body of Christ, wants to say to you as a people, to you as an individual. And you've heard me say that many times in the September, October time frame, something goes off literally in my spirit. It's like there's an internal clock there where I begin to look to the Lord, begin to look for the coming year, begin to look for, for vision. Because when I, when I first became the lead pastor here, the Lord said to me that although I was a man of skill, because I, I don't come from the cloth, I, I come from the business world, the Lord said to me that I, that I was not to lead the people of God by skill, but I was to lead the people of God by vision. And that is what I have tried to do prayerfully, uh, seeing what God is saying, seeing what God is doing, and then, and then following the cloud, following the cloud. You, you remember the children of Israel were, were only supposed to move when they saw the cloud move. If the cloud stopped, they stopped. If the cloud moved, they, they moved. And so they would pack up and they would move and then the cloud would stop and, and, and they would stop. And my friends, may, may we in 2024 be a people that are spirit-led. Hmm? We're, that we're led by spirit, that we're led by truth, and that we are not led by our emotions, that we are not led by our feelings, because we are, we are living in a day where, where feelings are, are, are trumping truth. But, but listen, Jesus never asked, how do you feel about that? Jesus came to say, I am the truth. And Jesus never said that your feelings will set you free. He said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And so I'm really believing that even as I just share in these few moments, I, I am believing God for vision. I am believing God for vision for your life. That literally your eyes would be open, that, that you would have, listen, open visions, dreams, that, that you would be people that would dream again, that would have hope again, that would, that would once again be inspired to see beyond what you are experienced to, to experiencing today, because I want to tell you that God has so much more. That is not to suggest that there isn't going to be adversity. That's not to suggest that persecution isn't coming, that the difficult times aren't coming to the body of Christ. But in spite of it all, God is saying, I still have vision for you, and I'm still calling you to be the, the people of hope and the people of, of transformation and the people that will bring truth to a dying world. Truth is one of the hardest things to find. I know, I know something that you're wondering right now is you're, you're wondering, Pastor, what is on your face? What is, what is on your face? Because I, you know, I, I, come, I come through downstairs. One of the reasons I come through downstairs, I love to greet the children. I love to greet the children and they love to hug me. And then, and then one of them said to me, Pastor, what's on your face? You got to love children. I said, do you like it? And they're like, mm, but what's on your face? And I, so I, I, had to answer, I had to answer them biblically. And I said, it does not yet appear what it shall be. But children, pray for your pastor, all right? Because I, because I'm not quite sure what it is either. But praise God, I, I want to bring you, I want to bring you to the Word of God. I want to bring you to the Word of God. And there is a, there is a scripture in the Old Testament out of, out of Isaiah that says that in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And the Lord was high and lifted up, and his train or his glory filled the temple. In the year that King Uzziah died, church, I want to tell you this year that, that, that some kings in our lives are going to die. We, we, all, we all have kings in our, in our lives, that, and some of them are good kings. I'm not saying they're all, they're all, you know, they're all bad and evil and, and then that, that we're somehow idolaters all the time, but, but we, have, we have kings in our lives that are going to die, but I want you to understand that when they die, you're going to see God. You're going to see the Lord in a new dimension. When I, when I went to pray in the fall, I'd rented a hotel and locked myself away. And I said, Lord, what shall I say to the people? What shall I say to the people? And, you know, 
Many times we come to these services and we want to hear about breakthroughs and prosperities and blessings and all those wonderful things. And I, and I think God wants to pour those things upon us. But, but here's what the Lord said to me. Something very, very simple and yet profound. Here's what the Lord said to me. Tell the people, I am with you, follow me. I am with you, follow me. Can you say that? Say, I am with you, follow me. Many people that came to Jesus in the scripture, do you know what his prescription to them was? Follow me. Follow me. Follow my ways. Follow my manners. Follow my commandments. Just follow me. We talked about that this morning about being on the path of of life. The path of life is about following Christ. And, and when we have vision, when our, when our, when our eyes are, are opened unto what the Lord is doing, then we have greater clarity to follow the Lord. Where is he? Where is he going? Where, where is that cloud? How is it moving? And, and by the way, the cloud may move differently for you than, than, than it may move for somebody else. And so don't, don't get caught up on how someone else is following the Lord. You focus on the Lord. Amen. Don't be, don't be deflectors. Don't be deflectors like Peter. When, when Peter was, was being ministered to by the Lord, he, he felt the pressure. And he said, well, what about John? What about, what about him? And here's what the Lord said to, to Peter. He said, Peter, mind your business. Huh? What is that to you, Peter? You, you follow me. Keep your eyes on me. I'll, I'll take care of John. You, you follow me. In the Bible, when we had blind people like Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus that we're going to talk about in the next few moments, because uh, Bartimaeus was blind, and I'm, I'm in Mark 10 and 46, in the Roman Empire, wherever the Romans would conquer, they, they, in their own wicked way, if you will, took care of people that were blind, people that were beggars, and, and they were given a garment. They were given a garment which identified them as being blind and being a beggar. It, it, so in other words, they were legitimized within society that, hey, we've identified this person as truly being blind, truly being a beggar, and truly being in need. And so when people saw, when people saw the, the, the garment, they knew that they could give alms to these people. And, and by the way, that's, that's how they, they lived. That's how they made a living. It was their identity. It was their identity. I want you to notice here in Mark, in Mark chapter 10, 46, he says, now, they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude, hmm, blind Bartimaeus and the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out to say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now watch this. He would have heard the commotion, and he would have asked, what's going on? What's going on? What's happening? What is this commotion? And the people said, it is Jesus of Nazareth. But notice when he cries out, he doesn't call him Jesus of Nazareth. He says, he says, he says, son of David, Jesus son of David. You know what he's saying? Really, son of David means I know you're the Messiah. They said it's Jesus of Nazareth. He said, no, 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 no. I know this is the Messiah. How, how he heard, how he knew, we, we don't understand. And then, and then we see that as he cries out in, in verse 48 that the people warned him to be quiet, but he cried all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. You, you see, my friends, the, the religious crowd will always try to keep you from Jesus. Be quiet. Don't be annoying. Don't, don't disturb the master. Don't, don't. Don't get too excited because he doesn't have time for you. He doesn't have a, he doesn't have a place for you. He's, 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 on his, he's on his way. And the reality is this. If you actually read the passage, Jesus passes him by. But Bartimaeus cries all the more. Now, I want you to see something that I've never seen, Pastor Moses, I've never seen this before, because we have the idea that, oh, Jesus must have stopped, watch this, so Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called, and then they called the blind man, saying to him, be of good cheer, rise up, he's calling you. You see, we, we, we've always been taught that, oh, the reason that Jesus stopped was because Bartimaeus got louder. 
I want to submit to you that it wasn't the reason that Jesus stopped. I believe that the reason Jesus stopped is because Bartimaeus, although he was blind, actually saw more than those around them that had sight. And when Jesus heard him say, son of David, Jesus stops. Almost to say, well, what, what did you call me? What, what did you call me? And he says, bring him here. I want you to see something now. Bring him here. In verse 50, the Bible says, and throwing aside his garment, he rose and he came to Jesus. I, I want you to catch the sequence. He hasn't been healed. He hasn't been touched. He's still blind. Maybe he's getting up and he's like, well, well, well lead me, guide me, but, but, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm, no longer, I'm no longer going to identify with this garment. Huh? Even, even though this is my, my source of income, even though this is my, my source of life, I, I, I refuse to be identified. Huh? I refuse to be identified and to be held in slavery. If the master has called me, something's going to happen. Huh? If the master has called me, something is about to happen in my life. Some of us have these garments. Some of us have these identification things, whether it's rejection or sorrow or 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 you know we, we our wounds some of us we 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 carry our wounds like a badge of honor and woe is me and all the and all the rest of it but my friends I'm telling you as you depart 2023 and you come into 2024 throw your garments away throw your garments away said he said what do you want me to and Jesus asked the obvious well what do you want me to do what do you want he says I want to receive I want to receive my sight and verse 52 and then Jesus said to him so Jesus heals him in verse 52, then it says, Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight. Watch this. And he followed Jesus on the road. I want you to catch this, that, that literally Bartimaeus was given a new lease on life. He was given a license. Jesus said to him, go, go and, go and live your life. You don't need the garment anymore. You, you now have sight. You can live the life you've never lived. You can, you can fulfill all your dreams and expectations and all your hopes and, and maybe all the things that, that, you, that you wanted that you never had. Go. In this particular case, Jesus said, go, go and, go and live your life. Now watch this. Bartimaeus doesn't go. Bartimaeus follows. Bartimaeus follows because I believe in Bartimaeus mind he's he's thinking Lord what could I see out there that I can't see in you what, what am I possibly going to experience in that life I would rather experience the life that is in you if you have the ability to cause me to see I would rather see life through your lens We have so many people believing that there's a better lens, that they want to experience things. And, and in reality, they think they have vision, but in reality, they're actually blind. God is opening eyes tonight. God is opening eyes. God is giving you vision. Because if you don't have vision, you are going to perish. God wants to give you a brand new vision for your life. 
No more identifying with your past. The Lord is saying, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Follow me. Follow me this morning. And I don't have that time. You know, I, this morning I gave you those four points that, that, that uh, you know, uh, you need to start praying as of today. But the Lord is saying, follow me. Follow me in 2024. See what, see what I will do. See what I can do. When, when you put your faith in me, when you put your trust in me, that what he did for Kayla, listen, listen, as wonderful as she is, she's not more special than you. You know, she's the apple of the Father's eye. So are you. He's no respecter of persons. But to those that have faith, to those that have trust, to those that are willing, they're willing. I want to close by giving you this scripture. It's found in 1 Chronicles 28, 20, I believe a scripture that the Lord gave me for 2024. David is speaking to his son Solomon and there is a, a, you know, a transition and he's preparing his son. The Bible says, and David said to his son Solomon, catch these words, church. Notice what he says. He says, be strong and of good courage and do it. I like that. Do not fear nor be dismayed for the Lord God, my God, will be with you. He'll be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Watch this. Until you have finished all the work of the service of the house of God. Church, I want to encourage you. God is with you. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. Not in the up times, not in the down times. Not in the times that are in between. He won't leave you in the valley. He won't leave you in the mountain. God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. All you have to do is follow. All you have to do is follow. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. I declare a new vision. I declare a new vision. I declare a fresh vision. That God is in our midst. That God is in our midst. Hallelujah. That he's with us. He's with us. Hallelujah. I want us to stand. We're about to usher in. Worship team, we're going to go and do the countdown song instead of the other song. And we can do that song too. Because we're about to have a little bit of a party here in the presence of God. But church, here's what I believe in, in Kairos moments. I believe that, that it, you know, we could press the, the reset button. Huh? Maybe, maybe you came in here disappointed tonight. You, you came in here stressed out tonight. You, you came in uncertain about 2023, 2024. But I want you to know that in God, there is a reset button. There, there are Kairos moments. Where God makes the difference because he's with us, because he's on our side, because God is for us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Oh, somebody ought to give God praise. Somebody ought to give God praise as you press the reset button. Hallelujah. God is with you. I said God is with you. I said God is for you. Who can be against you? I declare a blessing 2024 for you and your family. I declare liberty. I declare freedom. I declare freedom in the Holy Ghost. The Lord shall set you free. The Lord shall prosper you. You shall be the head and not the tail. God is with you. God is with us. God is with us. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah. Oh, let's give God praise. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Here we go. Hallelujah. God is with us. Ten, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one.
Hey everybody, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate your time. Will you please like and subscribe so that you will get notifications? And by the way, your comments and your feedback are very important to us. Even sermon series and messages that you would like to hear about, please let us know, drop us a line. We would love to incorporate that into our teaching and our preaching. We appreciate you and thank you.